Welcome to the cockpit of a Sling NGT Next Generation Trainer. The Sling NGT is a TAA, a Technologically Advanced Aircraft, and it can be used for the sport, private, instrument, commercial, CFI, and CFII ratings. The only portion of that training that it cannot be used for is the spin training for CFI, but besides that, it can be used for all of the training for those ratings, as well as meeting the requirements for a TAA or complex airplane uh, for the commercial rating. So let's take a look at around this cockpit. On the left side over here, we have the master switch, which uh, provides power to the panel. Um, and just to the right of that is the, the key ignition. This uh, is, is only used for starting the airplane. Above this, we have lane A and lane B. Uh, these lanes are the switches that control the ECU, uh, the computer that controls the engine of this uh, Sling NGT. It's the Rotax 912 IS engine. So these replace what would have traditionally been magneto switches in a legacy airplane. Uh, the whole airplane is computer controlled and uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, intelligence that goes on behind the scenes. Center stage over here, we have the Garmin G3X Touch. This provides a primary flight display um, as well as a navigation. It's all touchscreen, super intuitive to use. And it also has engine monitoring. Um, the G3X Touch also controls the radio, the nav radio, and the transponder, which is, uh, which is remotely mounted behind the panel, uh, as well as the audio panel, which is also remotely mounted behind the panel. So there's an awful lot going on here, and it's all super intuitive to use and control. Um, it also communicates um, uh, very nicely with the, with the GTN 650XI, which is what we use as our uh, COM, NAV, and GPS IFR navigator. Um, the combination of the G3X Touch, the backup G5, and the autopilot is what makes this airplane a TAA. And um, the GTN 650 is what makes this an IFR trainer. So that's the basics of uh, the avionics that we have here in the panel. Moving along to the right side of the G3X Touch, we have the fuel pumps. Um, the main pump and the aux pump. This engine has dual electric fuel pumps. We fly with the main pump on at all times and um, anywhere below about 2,000 feet AGL we also have the aux pump on or doing uh, maneuvers. Just to the right of uh, these uh, guarded switches over here is the ECU backup switch. We use this switch uh, during the pre-start checklist and this would be used in an emergency if both of the engine-driven alternators failed. This switch uh, bypasses the alternators and connects the engine directly to the battery in the case of an emergency. Uh, below these switches, we have the EFAS backup switch. That uh, uh, powers a backup battery that uh, keeps the, the primary EFAS and a few other primary components alive. EFAS 1 turns on the, the G3X touch. EFAS 2 uh, turns on the G5. The G5 also has its own backup battery mounted directly to it, so this will stay alive for quite some time in the event of a main power loss. Uh, below this, we have the avionics switch. This turns on the GTN 650XI, as well as the transponder and a few other uh, devices. The autopilot switch here powers the autopilot servos and the autopilot controller. We have the, this fantastic Garmin autopilot controller on board. It has direct uh, control of the heading and altitude bugs and the ability to select any of the lateral autopilot modes or the vertical modes available, as well as a great little wheel here to dial in uh, desired VSI, etc. And of course, don't forget this blue level button. You press this at any time, at any attitude, and uh, the autopilot will take control of the aircraft and, and bring it into level flight. So uh, this is a great feature to have. And then uh, just to the right of this, we have a cabin light over here, which turns on the, the cabin light. Um, below this, we have the flap switch. The flap switch has four positions, including up. We normally take off with flaps one, which is uh, 10 degrees of flaps, and we normally land with flaps three, or flaps down, which is about 30 degrees of flaps. The switch is a great indicator of flap position, and you can also see uh, position indicated on the G3X Touch right over here next to the trim indicator. And of course, if you look out the window, you can see the position of the flaps too. Uh, moving up here, of course, we've got the G5, which is a great uh, uh, backup uh, EFIS. It has primary flight, pitot static, AHARs, 
and it does have the ability to control the autopilot in the event of a G3X uh, failure. So uh, this little guy packs a lot of punch. To the right of the, the G5, we have the uh, light switches. We have strobe, taxi with a wigwag uh, position. If we put it in the down position, the, the, the taxi lights flash, which we use in flight uh, for, to help with uh, collision avoidance. And we have the landing lights and the nav lights. And then we also have the pedo heat here, which is available uh, to use with pedo icing. Below this, we have the cabin heater. When you pull this uh, knob out, it uh, provides heat through the, the vents on each side of the panel, as well as uh, to the pilot and passenger leg areas. So this is a, a very effective cabin heater. Uh, moving up uh, over here, we have the ELT controller and indicator. Um, which is available to use, a 406 megahertz ELT. And then below here we have our row of uh, circuit breakers, easy to access, easy to see. And we have a few more circuit breakers on this side as well as a cigarette lighter power adapter. And uh, right in front of the passenger we have uh, a little glove box which we use for carrying the POH and whatever else you need to carry. Moving down to the center console here, we have the fuel selector. Uh, we can select left and right with a simple uh, flip of this selector over here. And uh, we do this normally once every hour with this airplane. This airplane only burns about 3.5 gallons an hour in flight. So um, changing more than once an hour is, is a little bit of extra work that's not necessary. And if you need to turn the fuel off in an emergency, you pull uh, this little uh, lever out, oh, sorry. And if you need to turn the fuel off in an emergency, you pull this little handle out and it puts it into the off detent and locks it there. And you can get it out by pulling the little handle again and rotating it back to uh, right or left selector. If we follow further down the center console here, we have the throttle, of course. Uh, we have full power and idle power, a uh, real nice ergonomic uh, hand position. And kind of a little unusually uh, for a lot of airplanes, we have a handbrake uh, just to the right of it. Uh, you pull the brake uh, uh, backwards to deploy the, 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 the wheel brakes. Because the airplane has direct nose wheel steering, there's no need for uh, differential braking. So this just brakes both of the main gear. And it's very easy to use with one hand. If you're taxiing, you just advance the throttle a little bit. If you want to slow down, you pull the throttle back, reach over to the brake and pull the brake back. If you want to accelerate it again, you release the brake and advance the throttle. So it's a one-handed operation. And then if you do want to set a parking brake, you pull the handbrake back and you, sw uh, you switch the parking brake lever on. And now we have a parking brake set. Moving uh, up to the, the pilot uh, control stick, we have the trim controls up here, uh, down and up the autopilot disconnect, and then of course the press to talk on the trigger finger. So thanks for joining us for this brief cockpit tour of the Sling NGT. It's a fantastic ergonomic cockpit uh, with all the latest avionics available and the latest technology, a great place to get your training.